you were here during the Sunday school hour, uh, you were able to sit under the ministry of John Leonard. Uh, we have supported him for many years at Calvary, certainly predating my time uh, here with you. If you weren't here uh, during the Sunday school hour, you're going to be in uh, line for a blessing. Uh, John is a very able speaker. Uh, he has used the Lord in that way, but you're going to learn not only from the content that he brings, uh, but you're going to be encouraged by his dedication and passion uh, for his ministry. He's labored for several decades now on the field of Brazil, a second generation, at least brother, right? Second generation missionary. Uh, we support his brother Jim uh, as well. They were just here with us a few months ago. Uh, it's exciting to see how the Lord is working in their lives and ministry. Looking forward uh, to hearing what he has to share with us this morning. John, if you'd come. Bev and I always look forward to returning to the churches and individuals who support the work of church planning that we do in Brazil. We look forward to reporting back, usually in the Sunday school hour. And of course, we always look forward to opening the Word of God and sharing. But first, I'd like to give a little bit of testimony. I haven't always been in a wheelchair. We do church planning in favelas, which are slums. In Brazil, the police are not welcome. Those who run the favelas are the drug lords. We were in a favela starting a church when it was five, ten people that accepted Christ as their savior and no longer needed to be de dependent on narcotics to go forward in life. So they stopped buying. It was okay, but when it was 20, 30, and almost 40, the drug lord thought he could put a stop to it and had, us, had me shot. Sunday night after the evening service, after I preached, I was shot uh, six times. Twice in the face, one in the left arm, one grazed my neck, and when I fell forward, I was shot twice in the back. That would, that's what crippled me. For those in the medical field, I am a C4, C5 uh, injury. One of the bullets went through, shattered the C5, and uh, I carry around a C5 from a gentleman that didn't need it anymore from Pennsylvania. Uh, I wanted to write a thank you note to the family, but they never allowed that. Uh, we do praise the Lord that we've, he graciously allowed us to return to the mission field of Brazil. As church planted, we have planted various churches since I was shot years ago. And we look forward to going back and actively starting more churches in places that do not have the gospel. Please pass by our table, our display table. Uh, grab one of our prayer cards. We value your prayers. People say, how do you do it? I say, well, keep praying. I don't have an answer for that, except... In his mercy, God allows it. And uh, through your prayers, we are able to keep going on. We look forward to it. Also, we brought coffee candy from Brazil. So, grab one if you like it, grab two. We only have a certain amount, so don't take the whole bowl, but <laughs> leave some for someone else. Uh, but it is real coffee, and it is caffeinated. It's not, sorry, no decaf, okay? But it is good. And uh, try one, try two, and uh, uh, pray for us every time you say, I wish I had a whole bag of that coffee candy. Uh, let's open our Bibles. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The moment we accept Christ as our personal Savior, we are transformed. 
For those who live in slums in Brazil, a great majority of them are chemical dependents, either alcohol or a narcotic or a drug. And usually that is why they are in the slum, not always. But you see a transformation in their life. And, and we will talk about that, about the transformation that happened in my life and happened in yours. And some of the changes that happened in that transformation in the first verse. We see that it speaks about we don't know Christ in the flesh anymore. That is talking about when we were unsaved, we knew of Jesus Christ. Some people even use his name in a vulgar, ungodly manner. They know of Jesus Christ, but as a born-again believer, we don't know him that way anymore. We know him as our Savior. And there is a transformation, and that is what we are going to talk about this morning. If you are here this morning, and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, it is the most important decision that you will make from the moment you are born to the moment you pass away. So don't leave it for tomorrow. The cemetery is full of people that decided to leave it for tomorrow. Someday I will accept this transformation. And they never did. And they passed away knowing Christ in the flesh, but not as their Savior. I invite you to rise for the reading of the Word of God for those who can. After I will pray, and then you may be seated. Follow along as I read. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we, may, that we might be made the righteousness of of God in him. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word and for the invitation that you have day and night to be one of the family of God, to be transformed. And may we study a little bit about this this morning. And if there be one who has not accepted Christ, that today might be their day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. A great majority of the gemstones in Brazil, uh, in the world, come from Brazil. The state right north to us, we go up there for conferences on occasion. It's only a couple hour drive. There are miners, and they know how to pick out the stones that are precious and semi-precious gemstones. It's a stone that you and I would pick up to, 
to toss. Just to see the size of the splash and ripples in the water. But they know the value in a stone. And this is one of the stones. And it doesn't look like anything any different from any other stone. But then the miner says, this here has great value. And to prove it, they grab their hammer and in the key place on that stone, they crack it open. And on the inside, you see the value. Yes, most amethysts in the world come from Brazil. And, and they are a beautiful stone. And we have other stones down there also. And he said, you know, you, you, you get these and you break off each one of these and then you cut it and you polish it. And the end goes to market for necklaces and rings and precious stones. What a transformation. And that is what happens in my life, in your life, and many of the people that we speak to in the favelas of Brazil. And we look at them as, oh, he's not a very good candidate. I'll pass him up. I'll pass her up. But we don't see the inside. We don't see the value that God does. And after the transformation happens, after we are broken open and worked on and with, then the real value shows up. Transformation. In our text, we see here that we have a new testimony. In verses uh, 16 and 17, it talks about that. Our testimony is we don't know Christ anymore as the normal person does, as the unsaved person does. We know him as our Savior, and we must share that. And in verse 17, the last few words say, all things are become new. We are a new creature in Christ. We do door-to-door -door visitation in Brazil. We highly encourage neighbors, visiting neighbors. A study was made recently about people who accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. 85% of the people who get saved, get saved through a family member or a friend. Now there are the other 15% of a missionary coming into a favela, cold turkey, and knocking on doors. But then we go back again and again and again and become friends and then we fit into the 85%. And we don't only do that, we encourage you to do that. The chances of someone accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Savior are vastly larger if you know them or if they're a family member. I use this as a word of encouragement to you this morning we have a new testimony all things have become new and you must tell people about what is new in your life and why and how they can have it too when we knock on doors we we, we even though brazil is the largest 
Catholic country in the world, a vast majority of Brazilians are Catholic or nominal Catholics. There is other religions also, and one of them is spirit worship. Martin Homildo was a family, a family that we knocked on their door, uh, just cold turkey, and invited them to our church, and I asked if they were a member of any group or church, and he said, no, we're not Roman Catholic, we're, we're spiritists, we worship the spirit world. And I said, well, if you feel down in your soul, in your heart, that there is something that you are missing, please come to our church. And they came. And they came again. And after about the fourth, fifth time, they got saved. And they were transformed. And he's a vital part in the church today. We have a new testimony. We have a new task. In verses 18 and 19, I want you to notice only the last phrase in each verse. Verse 18 says that we, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. In that transformation, something was given to us, not only eternal life, not only our name written in heaven, but also we are given the ministry of reconciliation. Going back to the first point, going to our neighbors, going to our friends, going to our family members, and even going after the 15% of people we don't even know because they need the transformation that happened in our lives also. We have, a new, we have a new testimony. We have a new task. In verse 19, it even uses stronger words that reconciliation was committed to us. It wasn't only given to us, it was committed to us. It's not a choice. It's an obligation. We must do it. If we don't, who will? We must not point to the others. We must say, this was given to me, and it is my obligation. It was committed to me. God entrusted this to me. We have a new testimony. We have a new task. I have a friend that I grew up with. His name is Adalto, Adalto Bizeja. As a young man growing up in Brazil, I even went to university in Brazil. I would invite him to go to church. I would invite him to go to special events. And he always said, would say, I don't have time. I need to work. I need to grow. I need to work. I need to grow. And he got a good job. He went to university, got a good job. He bought a cattle ranch. He got money together and bought another cattle ranch. And he became the mayor of our city. And he became a congressman. He became a senator. Then he became the, 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 the governor of our state. And I'd visit him. And I'd say, Adalto, I'm going to preach close by here. Do you have time? And he says, no. I said, when is enough enough? He says, there's never enough. There's never enough. More is never enough. And he said, that's my life. I always want more. I always want more. I said, how about God? He said, well, maybe someday. The Bible tells us about a man 
who was about that, and he had good crops, and he didn't have anywhere to put them. So he knocked his barns down, and he made bigger. And he said, this is the life. And God said, you fool, tonight you will die. And the first round of COVID came, and I caught it, and he didn't. And I made it through, and the second round came, and I caught it again, and he caught it and died. And he died basically saying, when more is never enough, and God was not a factor in his life. Through life, you will have a testimony like this of people that you reached out dozens, maybe even hundreds of times. A friend, a family member, a workmate, a schoolmate. And they don't have time for God. Then it's their problem and not yours. We have a testimony. We have a task. We have a new title. In verse 18, it says that we are ambassadors. That we are ambassadors for Christ. Every country has ambassadors. Two other countries here in the United States. Basically every country on planet Earth has a consulate and in that consulate, they have an ambassador. The United States has consulates all over the world, and we have representatives. We are representatives of heaven. There's an old song that we learned many years ago. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. We are ambassadors. We have a new title. Cloud you, he would come to the tent church. We have a piece of land that we rent. We have a tent on that land. And uh, Cloud you, he, he would come and disrupt the services. Do we have a picture of him before this, Bev? Okay, this is the one that we have. I'll see if I'll have. Is there one before this? Okay, sorry. Thought I put one in there. My fault. Uh, but this is the one I have of him and of me. Uh, Claudio would come and he was a crackhead and he'd come all high and he'd disrupt the services. And I'd have to interrupt the sermon or the service and ask him to quiet down or leave. But he always came to the services and his wife would come with him. And she was a drug addict also, crackhead. And I'd say, accept Christ as your Savior. No, I'm going to kick my habit, and then I'll accept Christ. And I'd ask his wife, how about you? And she says, no, I'm going to kick my habit. And I said, probably not going to happen. If it does, you'll be one of the first. Accept Christ, and he'll be with you and help you. Take the habit. You won't need crack anymore because you have Jesus. One day he showed up at the tent church early. He was by himself. That was a, they were always together. I said, where's your wife? She died. I said, well, how? She overdosed last, last night, and I woke up this morning, and she was beside me, dead. I said, wow, I'm sorry. He said, I want to get saved. I said, okay. And he got saved, and he tried to kick the habit on his own. But today he's in a rehab center, and we praise the Lord for that because we're able to go there. 
and hold, hold, hold services. I ask permission and do impromptu services with any of the other men that are there at the rehab center. And uh, he's a living testimony in there, and he can't wait to get out and face up to one of his new titles, ambassador. He's being an ambassador inside there, and he can't wait to leave, leave and give his testimony on the outside world. We have a new title. We have a no, new totality. Christ is our all in all. Many religions that call themselves Christian religions say you need Christ and baptism. You need Christ and our church. You need Christ and good works. You need Christ and this. You need Christ and that to get to heaven. The Word of God doesn't teach that. In that transformation, we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, and that is all we need. It is not complex. That is why we are missionaries, starting churches in favelas, where many of the people are addicts or have other terrible problems. Many of them are illiterate or semi-literate. But we share Jesus with them, and we say it's not hard. It's Jesus plus nothing. See, Bally is one of the ladies in Indian work. We've, we've been working with the native on a, on a reservation also during the week we do other things also one of them is reservation work we go to the guarani reservation and she got saved as a child now she's an adult her husband has gotten saved uh he was recently baptized and she just loves the lord with all her heart and she goes around telling other uh Na guarani natives it's easy. You need Jesus plus nothing. We have a new totality. In verse 21, it says, might be made the righteousness of God in him, in Christ. Last verse I'd like to share with you is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Brother and sister believers, let's be the peacemakers. And for those of you who have not accepted, do that today. Be a part of the family of the peacemakers, eternal peace in Christ. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for these few minutes in your word. Words of encouragement, of transformation, of salvation. We ask your blessing on the rest of today. And if there be any decision that needs to be made, that it will be made right here, right now. In Christ's name we pray.